Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll try to understand the structure of the female cone of pines. Female cone of pines. We have already seen the structure of the male cone. Female cones are larger as compared to the male cones. Larger than male cones. And here also the central axis is surrounded by sporophylls. And these sporophylls are megasporophylls. So there is a central axis and spirally arranged leaves. But this one female cone is much larger. And we have also seen where these female cones grow. They grow in the axle of scaly leaves. And that is why they are always single. Male cones are always grow in cluster, whereas they grow singly. So this is uh, the basic thing that we need to know about the female cone. Now again, if we see the vertical section, we would find the central axis and we would see these megasporophylls spirally arranged. Now the shape is slightly different than what we made in case of the male cones. And these cones take a long period to develop and this period can be up to two to three years. So, the first year cones are there, the second year cones are there. Now, how do we differentiate? These megasporophylls, they are placed one over the other like this. So, if it is the first year cone, these leaves are going to be very close to each other. As the cone grows and matures, these leaves, they get a little spaced. Because now the female gamete is going to be ready and it is going to receive those pollen grains which can fertilize the egg. So, the distance between the leaves that also keeps changing and we will draw this detailed structure also. So these are the leaves on one side similarly here also these leaves would be there. Now if we enlarge one megasporophyll these are the megasporophylls and this is the central axis around which these megasporophylls are arranged. Now if we draw this megasporophyll from one side we would see that it has a large woody structure and beneath it there is a smaller woody structure. The larger one is known as the ovuliferous bract or sometimes it is also known as ovuliferous a scale and this one which is the smaller is known as the bract scale. This is also called the scale. Now basically these are two parts. Now what is the purpose of this bract scale and both these together they make the megasporophyll. If you remember I said that the pollen grains they are wind pollinated. That means it is the wind which is going to bring those pollen grains here. The time period which is between pollination and fertilization is approximately 15 months. So if the pollen grains are carried by wind and suppose they come and lie here. It has to remain here. The pollen grains must stay here because they are very lightweight powdery which can be carried by wind. Suppose the structure was not there, there was no place for the pollen grains to rest. Not only rest, it should be such a place that if pollen grain comes and fits here, it should not move from this place. Because after pollination, before fertilization can take place, there is a long period of about 15 months. So for that long period, the pollen grain should get or remain trapped inside this structure. And it, we see from one side as in this diagram, we find that there is one such depression in this. Actually, there are two. Those two depressions will be seen when we see it from the upper side. And in this depression, there is the ovule. 
So here is one ovule which we are drawing. And let us now draw the structure where we see both the ovules. So this is the megasporophyll and on the lower side we find that there are two such depressions and each depression is going to have this one ovule. This is the stalk of the ovule and this is the body. The ovule is orthotropous and unitegmic which is a characteristic feature of gymnosperm. So this is orthotropous unitegmic ovule. Orthotropous means upright. The funicle, micropyle, chalaza, everything is going to be in one line. Then that ovule is known as orthotropous. And there is only one integument and so it is known as unitegmic ovule. Now in this ovule, there would be the egg. So our, all other structure that is new cellars and those things would be there. But this is going to be the female gamete that is egg. Now if again we come back to this structure, the pollen grain is going to come and rest here for that period. The pollen tube has already germinated and then this pollen tube is going to reach up to the egg and fertilization is going to take place. Now in case of uh, pinus, as I said the time required between uh, pollination and fertilization is very long. Also the time required between fertilization and seed formation is also very long. So every megasporophyll is going to have two ovules, each ovule having one egg. As the ovules are not in enclosed inside any uh, ovary, this ovule will change into seed but because of absence of ovary there is no cover outside that seed that means it is not going to be enclosed inside any fruit and that is why we call these seeds as naked seeds. So the function of this bract scale is to hold that pollen grain which has reached here uh, through wind and just trap it there so that it stays till fertilization takes place. The thing that we have to remember here is this one, the ovule is orthotropous unitegmic. Now when fertilization takes place, the process of fertilization, that means the pollen grape would release the male gamete. The male gamete will fuse with the egg. So this is the egg, it fuses with the male gamete. So this is the female gamete, this is the male gamete. And now the zygote which is formed is going to change into the embryo. And because the zygote is inside the ovule, it is inside the ovule, the ovule is going to change into the seed. And the seed is going to be naked. The seed in case of pinus has many cotyledons. When we talk of angiospermic plants, we talk about seeds where the cotyledons are either one or two. The, those seeds are known as monocots and dicots. Whereas in case of gymnosperms, the seeds are with many cotyledons. And all of the structure that is radical, plumule, the axis, hypocotyl, epicotyl, all those structures are going to be as, it, as they are in other seeds also. And a single seed coat is going to be there. Let us talk about one plant that is Pinus girardiana. Its seeds are edible and they are commonly known as Chilgoza. These are the edible seeds of one particular species of Pinus. So these are consumed by people. Other seeds are consumed by the animals, not by human beings most commonly. But this is how fertilization is going to take place and the time period which is required between pollination and fertilization and fertilization and seed formation. These are long periods and each megasporophyll is going to have two ovules. Each ovule is orthotropous and unitegmic 
which are the characteristic features of uh, the gymnosperms. And this is especially in case of pinus. So we have seen the pinus plant, its morphological structure, how many types of leaves, long shoot or dwarf shoot, how these structures are. We have also understood the sexual reproduction, that is the spores which are produced, that is microspore, which is the pollen wave and megaspore, which is the egg. And then fertilization results into formation of a seed, which is naked. So the plant which is possessing these mega and micro sporophylls is actually the spore producing stage. So the dominant stage in case of pinus or in gymnosperms, the dominant stage is sporophyte. And what exactly is the gametophyte stage? The gametophyte stage is only that stage where the gamete formation takes place. In case of males, it is the pollen grain in which Two male gametes would be produced and here it is the ovule in which the egg is produced. So the pollen grain is short lived even the ovule is short lived and the main plant or the tree that is visible to us that is the sporophyte. So when we uh, talk about the entire evolutionary thing in plant kingdom we have seen that from bryophytes these things uh, after bryophytes the things have started changing. In bryophytes the predominant stage was a gametophyte, it changed in pteridophytes. In pteridophytes, the predominant stage was a sporophyte. Same thing happened in case of gymnosperms also. And when we come to angiosperms, there also we find that the predominant stage is the sporophyte. So this is about pinus. Now in the next part, we'll talk about some other gymnosperms.